today it's Monday on the farm. Unfortunately, the weather is terrible and we're supposed to do the harvest this week. So today we're doing this, which is we're putting in some stock fencing. This is gonna keep the horses and the sheep in at the winter time. We'll bring the rams on this field and we're putting this electric fencing in. So we've, we've just finished putting this four row in of electric fencing. It's from Gallagher. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Um, but it's really good stuff and it's a permanent electric fence we're gonna have on the farm now, near the farmyard, to keep all the livestock in. So that's what we're up to today. There's a fair bit to do yet, so I'll show you the updates towards the end of the week. So um, that's what we're doing. Weather is absolutely awful, absolutely awful. I don't know how we're gonna do the harvest tomorrow, if that, but we were supposed to cut all the, start the combining on Tuesday, if, if it goes well, but as long as the rain holds off. Yeah. Wednesday and I'm in the farmyard. I was baling until 11 last night and I've had the baler out this morning. I've opened up all the doors on it, greased it, also blowed it, blowed it off over the road. I've still got a little bit over there to blow off, um, but all in all, it's all ready to go baling straw again. Unfortunately, we were rained off yesterday. I've got some cheap net wrap in here, which is okay. Um, it's just like a, a very cheap farmer's one they do um, from a, a dealership. Um, but I have got some other stuff which is called Tama, uh, which is brilliant edge-to-edge -edge stuff. So that's what I'd like to use if I can in the future. But this stuff was really, really good for the price. So obviously that's why we went for the cheaper stuff. Um, and I've been greasing it all up, getting it ready for the next time. I've got my grease gun out at the moment. And just going through it all, making sure it's all all right. The back door is locked. There's a valve you lock on the front um, so that it can be locked out. This is the grease block here where you can grease the whole of the baler almost there's still a few little places like the back door hinges and there's a few little rollers around here which have got nipples on which you have to do as well this is the oil box which 
auto oils the chains and all of the small sort of bearings down here on the pickup and I've got to finish off blowing this all, all off and giving this a really really good clean until we go bailing again tomorrow uh, well I say tomorrow it all depends on the weather um, I've got the wheels I pulled them out of the workshop uh, Trevor said not to use them but actually I spoke to a service technician today who said these are really really good the wheels for when you go over things like tram lines and I have noticed that because otherwise you will start bending tines um, down below on the pickup so I will be putting the wheels on uh, when I go into a field now with tram lines every time and uh, see how they go but for the most part greased up the PTO shaft always grease your shaft they always say because otherwise your UJs will go all those sort of bits um, and the bearings at the back at the back as well so you know it's just more than anything is preparation and they, they do say the key to making a baler last and especially equipment like this is grease 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 and oil as well keep those bearings greased only a little bit every day a little squirt every 24 hours um, i'll fill that up with oil this takes chain oil it's the same as what you put in the chainsaw you must use the correct oil for the chains otherwise you can do a lot of damage if you just put like engine oil in it or hydraulic oil some people some people put in but you really want to use the quality chain oil to make the components of the baler last um this baler i must say is absolutely fantastic really really happy with it it's been it's put out some of the best bales i've ever seen in my life um this is the 160 you can get a bigger 180 this is the 160v so it's got a variable chamber variable density variable size it's also got a hydraulic floor in it and it's also got the optional knives, which are really, really good for silage. If you go on the monitor in the computer, uh, you can change whether you want the knives on or not. And I don't use the knives in straw, only in silage. I'll just drop the floor down now in the chamber and I'll show you the knives. And I found the floor to be really handy because if you get a blockage in the chamber or even in the pickup, you can turn the tractor down on low RPM, open the floor and push the silage through with the PTO or the blocked straw or whatever up through the pickup or through the rotors normally is where it would block but it doesn't matter too much because once you open the bottom floor the P you turn the PTO on it will unblock it's awesome um, so yeah this is I believe an optional extra they do the hydraulic floor and the knives and the pickup as well which is hydraulic I sometimes adjust the hydraulic on tram lines and things like that um, but yeah, really, really happy with it. That's what the knives look like when they're out, and they're pretty good for silage. If you want to chop up silage, some people say that the chopped silage is better for cow's digestion. So I'll be trying these out more and more with silage. You do have to sharpen them once a season, so we'll have them out in the winter and put them on the grinder. Um, but yeah, for now, I only use them in silage. I don't use them in straw, so I'll put them away. All right, today it's Thursday, and as you can see behind me, we're starting to bring some of these lovely bales in, which we've been making over the last couple of days. And these are some 150s, although some of them be coming out, I'll be measuring them. Some, some of them are 155, 160s. <laughs> There's some big old bales this year, but the idea was that we, once you put them in the field or in the feed rings, the idea is that we're, not, we're gonna have less runs back to the straw stack. That was the idea anyway, which Dad and I had of doing bigger bales. And this is using the Tama net, which was left in the Fent baler, and I've also bought some cheaper net wrap, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, hasn't done as good a job, I don't think, as the stuff which was left in the baler. You can see it's all gone to the edge there, it's lovely. And it also, I found, makes the bales tighter on the edges. So I've got these. Also, something else happened the other day. When I was loading a um, piece of machinery, the bonnet was cracked, damaged. So luckily that was the only thing, the bonnet and this light as well. So I ordered a new light and then I had this on order for a little while from uh, France of all places uh, because obviously uh, uh, Manitou being French. So I've got this blooming big box from, delivered from TNS this afternoon, which is enormous. And inside, <clears throat> that's the replacement bonnet. So that is going to have to go on at some point end of the week i'm not sure if it's painted or not with all the decals it's is, oh, it is painted but i'm not sure if it's got the decals on Ooh, i'm sure we'll find out but anyway that's got to go on one of those things um so yeah not really sure what to do with the old bonnet on it at the moment yet but not really a huge amount you can do with an old bonnet but anyway that happened so that's what it is um so 
I'll show you some of these, I'll show you some of these other bales. Um, yeah, the kind of bales all over the farmyard at the moment. They're just kind of coming in and I'm just getting them ready to go into the shed. <laughs> it all sort of works out. This is the 6R at the moment, which I've got on the cultivator. This is because we wanted, long story on this one, uh, we wanted to plant the turnips this year with a stock sag box, which we were going to put uh, behind there, or an AB, ABV, AVP box, which was going to go in the middle of the cultivator to direct drill the turnips. Um, actually, in the end of it, we looked at the prices and we decided instead, we've been after a drill for a long time to do the spring barley and to plant like grass and bird cover and stuff like that. And uh, we've decided now, instead of buying the stock sack box, instead we're going to get like a, over the winter, we'll buy a three metre Amazon drill, which is what the previous contractor used to have. So we're going to be looking at an Amazon drill with Matt from PEX in the next couple of months. And here's the baler that is all ready to go. When the weather gets better, it'll be out with a combine before long. I hold back with the manatee. I can only get four on the bottom. Normally with 120 centimetre bales, I can get five. But these being the big bales, I can only get four underneath, four on top. And I'll tell you what, my little manatee really did well getting these home. So um, these will come off. They're absolutely enormous. Um, like concrete as well. But yeah, these will come off. We'll stack them in the shed and try and put as many as we can indoors this year if we can out of the dry, out of the wet in the dry so yeah that's what's going on today um i've just got to make a few phone calls because i was supposed to go and pick up the 50k tractor later on today so that's what i'm waiting for we're going to get a phone call in a minute to hopefully go and pick it up today and if it won't be today it will hopefully be tomorrow or over the weekend so we're going to go and get back stack the bales in the shed and then we'll go and cart some more um back into the yard so before i forget these are the bales i was saying about the slightly cheaper net wrap which i picked up if you have a look it doesn't quite see what i mean doesn't quite come to the edge of the bale still a bale not the end of the world but just not as neat as the, what the tammer was uh tammer net wrap so try i'm going to try and get some tammer net wrap from all valley farmers if i can um, but yeah that see they're not quite as neat as what the tammer ones are but anyway there we are Friday evening the stubble was being drilled with turnips middle ditch did that and I'm now going along this evening rolling it before the rain tomorrow morning and earlier on I was loading this, this molting spring barley which went off on a haulier to Aylsham which was uh, where Frontiers collection centre is and it's gone off to be made into beer so it's made the grade as molting barley and we're just now literally about to put the lights on for the rollers and we had a phone call as well this afternoon to say um, that we could go tomorrow which is saturday and pick up the mystery tractor so uh, really excited uh, want to get this job done tonight and um, get off tomorrow sort of tomorrow lunchtime um, i'll be repairing the trailer in the morning i've uh, got a bust hydraulic pipe on the bale trailer at the moment um, and then we'll be off to go pick up the tractor, hopefully, as long as this all goes well tonight. And uh, if you're wondering why I've got a plaster on my nose, it's because I broke my nose on the baler. Um, I let the ladder down in the middle of the night to change the neck wrap, and I smacked my nose with the blooming ladder. But there we go. Um, so yeah, trying to get this done tonight, and then can't wait tomorrow to go and pick up the tractor. And the farmer just sent me a picture of the tractor. It looks great. And yeah, I'll drive it back from Deerham. Uh, it's a fair old Hoss, other side of Norwich, but it's got 50 kilometres an hour gearbox, so it should be okay. Um, and then this evening, I thought I'd cheat with, <laughs> I thought I'd cheat with the rolling, I put, put the Green Star on, and it's actually worked out quite well. So I have got here my iPad and cab, and I can watch um, TV. I've got Netflix on it and YouTube and all that sort of thing, and then the GPS. When I look over my shoulder to watch the work, the GPS will tell me when the turn is coming up, so it warns you before you 
go straight through the field into someone's house. So, yeah, it's quite it is quite clever this technology. To be fair, this, I, I very rarely use GPS and all that sort of thing. But when it's night time and you just want to watch something on the on the film and watch your work, um, I'll, I'll have a go at it. So, all these blooming insects. I was out changing net wrap the other day on the baler, and I got out. And all these insects bit me. They bit me like to hell. So I'm happy tonight. I'm in the sealed cab, and I am not getting out of here. No way am I getting out of this thing tonight. No way. I'm going to drive through the next field without getting out of the cab, hopefully. Absolutely not. Um, yeah, bloody things. Never used to see this many insects, but I think it's because they've banned so many pesticides and herbicides these days, they've made a return. I didn't film anything on the way home just because I wanted to get it home. Um, it's quite a special tractor and it was really difficult to get hold of a tractor like this. So uh, here she is anyway. So just pulled up in the yard. Uh, it's a 6930 premium, just like the one we used to have. It's got Michelin XO bib tyres on it. They're um, 600s on the front and it's got 710s on the back, XO bibs. Um, rear linkage is all in good nick. I've had it through the workshop. Um, been looking at the drawbar. The drawbar was seized up, so I've put a bit of grease on that. Uh, put a new bulb on one of the beacons. One of the bands has gone as well. A few little bits and bobs I've been doing to it just to try and tidy it up. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with it so far. Let me know what you think of her in the comments. Um, so yeah, she's back. Got another 6930. It's not the one we used to have, but it is a 6930 nonetheless. And it's a later model than we used to have with auto power, which is what we wanted for the baler. It has, it's a 2011, originally from uh, Ben Burgess, which is the local John Deere dealership just down the road. And it's also got, if you look in the cab, a little box as well for me to put my lunch, which is quite a clever idea. Got another number plate for it. If I take it to the workshop, I have got as well another floor mat for this, which I used to have for my old 6930. Um, see as well, we put this little keychain on put it on all the tractors now um, yeah so this is the auto power that work really really well with the baler and then we've got the electric servo controls which I never had on my old one I just had the original hydraulic controls like the manual ones and then manual spools and then if you go to the main section which is here six thousand hours is all she's done just over six thousand so nothing too crazy not too bad for our second tractor and it's also a modern classic as well which will fit in around the farm hopefully really really well so yeah let me know what you think in the comment section down below trevor hasn't seen it yet he's been busy away all week doing firewood so i'll see him tomorrow i'm not too sure whether this will go out tomorrow and you'll see trevor in the video or not but he will be around tomorrow so let's have a look it is warmed up now because i've just driven it home so no ad blue or anything like that Anyway, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, we'll put her away for the night anyway, so she's lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Got a 6.9 again, 6.9's back. And I've got the gas struts to go on here, because if you look, 
steering wheel's not quite right, so I've got another gas strut to go on that, so. Oh, she's lovely, she's lovely. Just like my old one, but with some bigger tires and a little bit later, 2011 as well, so. Why not? All right, today it's Sunday morning, and as you can hopefully see, six lines in the shed, and uh, yeah, looking well, so had a lot of downpour last night i also found out when i put this tractor away last night and also when i was on the way home this wing mirror here is broken there's a small rivet in there and on the workshop we've got like a metal foundry i'll put this into the blokes on monday i'll give it take it off and give it to them and they'll fix that they'll drill a hole through that and put a new rivet in which will hopefully then hold this wing mirror still in a fixed position because i'm not buying a new 100 200 pound wing mirror just for the sake of it, you've got to make things last, haven't you, at the end of the day? And um, yes, just come out to look at her this morning. So, got a few little jobs to do on her, um, a few little bits and bobs left, but it's not there's not really too much to do on it. It's, it's actually in really, really good condition. I'm really pleased with it. I haven't been able to look much. Uh, had a fairly new battery not that long ago, it's got the heat shield on the side. One of the problems on the 30s was there was a bracket on there which would crack off every now and then. And uh, see that's in good condition. There's the VGT turbo. What the belt's in. Belt's in good condition or not? I'll get our mechanic on it, Jack, and he can have a look at it all. But actually doesn't look in too bad nick, to be fair. Alternator sounds good when you start it up. Um, yeah, all in all, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of something there, look. Have a word with Jack about that. Something maybe seeping out. You do get that, of course, on these older tractors, but other than that, it's not bad. Not bad at all, so. It's got a clevis linkage on the front, which is unusual. You never normally have them on the front. They normally always go down the bottom, but by the fuel tank, but anyway. The idea, anyway, is this tractor will go on the baler, round baler with the auto power gearbox. It'll be great for running the fent baler, which at the moment I've blown off and I've got ready for the next job. I also filled it up with chainsaw oil in this canister that's to lubricate all the chains and if you put hydraulic oil in or engine oil you will mess up all the chains so that is a proper still chainsaw oil i know a cramp chainsaw oil i put in that last night um yeah just getting this ready because the weather is just terrible we had loads of rain i think we had about 10 mil of rain last night and this upcoming next couple of weeks we've still got silage in the field and there's also to go and cut which might go cutting moment six nine and there's also um, loads of straw to go and bale as well. So not half straw, but a straw on a farm next door. So got to get the baler up and running, put it on the 6.9 and go and bale some straw. And hopefully Trevor will be here later on. Unfortunately, this video will be out um, before Trevor gets here, I think. But yeah, let me know what you think of the 6.9. And um, if you've got any ideas for it, any, anything you, you think uh, you, know, you want to let, know, let us know about it. Do with this tractor. I know some people customise them and they put all sorts of likes on them and all the rest of it. but. For me, I'll just keep it standard. Um, it's lovely, it's a really lovely tractor. So there we, there we go. Um, uh, got the Ranger in at the moment, got the, man, got the bonnet to go on the Manatee before long. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all going well, but yeah, the weather isn't great, but there we are. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next week in next week's video, when fingers crossed we'll be out baling, mowing, loading the rest of the barley, that's off, going to Frontier at Aylsham to be made into beer, uh, bolting barley, and um, might be doing some more livestock work as well. I've got some Aberdeen Angus cattle to go and look at. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in next week's video. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.